My journey to discover fake news begins in Russia, on a sidewalk, late at night, and I've been drinking <laughs> vodka, of course. I'm with a man that I met at Pravda, the newspaper, and we're talking about freedom and ideas and information and journalism. And as the night gets later, he gets more animated, and finally he says to me, "You know, you Americans have it all wrong. You believe what you read in the papers. We Russians, we understand." We read between the lines. Well, that hits me hard. So the next morning, I'm on a plane flying back to the United States to my college radio station, WSBN, in Saratoga Springs, FM 91, where I am news director. And I gather together my team and I say, "We've been doing it all wrong. We've been reading the news. We need to stop." And I walk over to the Associated Press wire service, and I unplug it. Clickety clack, clickety clack. It grinds to a halt, and the newsroom. Is silent. One of my producers raises her hand and says, "But Steve, you've unplugged the truth machine." <laughs> Indeed, I had. Flash forward to today. Information is relentless. It comes at us like a fire hose, overwhelming and without context. So, what's changed? Well, a number of things. Printing presses used to be these big, expensive devices. Now. We each have one. We pick it up at Best Buy for 99 bucks, free if you have a coupon. Television, the same thing. Big, expensive studios, trucks, devices. Only the rich could produce television. Now, my guess is that many of you are streaming live on Facebook right now. <laughs> and finally, print used to require printing presses and physical devices, but now it lives in the sky above us in the cloud. So, what's changed? Today, the tools are democratized. Consumers are makers. And information is abundant, so these are all good things, right? Well, the answer is sort of, because anything that we can't seem to find context around, we simply label as fake. Once we find that everything is labeled fake, the question is, why is this? And the answer is, we can blame the obvious subjects: Reddit, Facebook, Google, Twitter. But the reality is, and this is what I'm going to suggest, that fake news is actually a good thing. That fake news is the end of an era, and that we are arriving at the beginning of a new one, an era that I would suggest is awake news. Now we are all becoming conscientious content consumers, and this is important because in order to become conscientious content consumers, fake news requires us to be active participants, more engaged, more thoughtful. Fake news is a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call to publishers, to platforms, and to the public. So let's go through them and see how it works. For publishers, fake news invites creators to state their publication's point of view and editorial standards. Now this is important because if it takes two sources to confirm a fact, we should know this. If there's a mistake and we all make them, how do they correct them? And most importantly, if they're going to use silent sources, unnamed sources, how do they do that? Sharing, sharing clear policies for how facts are checked. Shared and attributed will build trust with readers. Second, platforms—they have a different problem. For platforms like Facebook and Google, awake news rewards platforms that provide sources and clarity, replacing invisible algorithmic robots with tools that consumers can control. Because at the end of the day, we all are going to have our own version of a personal filter bubble. The question is, do we control it or do the robots control it? And then last, let's talk about the public. Awake news asks the readers to question the content they read and share, to be responsible creators and curators. So now let's face it: we've all done this, right? We've seen a headline, a salacious headline that we agreed with, and without going to Snopes to check and see if it's true, we've simply cut and pasted into Twitter or Facebook. But that's irresponsible, because at the end of the day, if we do that, what we're really doing is creating fake news of our own. So spreading bad information is no different. Than not washing your hands, a virus is a virus. Awake news consumers can stop fake news by exercising restraint and thoughtful social sharing. We all need to take responsibility for what we share; otherwise, we're helping contribute to the misinformation that's feeding the fake news firehose. So, awake news is not a fantasy; it is, in fact, the inevitable evolution of our information ecosystem. So, let me show you what it feels like. 
when you simply take a piece of information and irresponsibly share it. It feels like this, sharing without responsibility to your audience. Pretty uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm back. Um, so with that in mind, I've been thinking about who I could speak to about fake news and to see how serious a problem it was. And I reached out to the smartest person I know, Vint Cerf. Now, Vint is an enormously impressive internet pioneer. He actually, along with a partner, invented TCP IP, the device technology that controls the internet. And so I asked him, should we be concerned about fake news? And by the way, he's now an internet entrepreneur at Google, so I thought I knew his answer. Well, here's what he said. He said, yes, we should be concerned. And he also said, we should be concerned because at the end of the day, we need to use our smartest tools, not algorithms, but our brains to solve it. So flash forward, and I'm thinking about my Russian friend and his now prescient suggestion that we need to read between the lines. He certainly was thinking about awake news when he said that. So welcome to the era of awake news. The truth is important. The truth matters. Whatever you do and wherever you find it, don't turn your back on the truth. Thank you.